It's time. Spike. 1v1 versus every brawler in the game. How will our balloon-loving cacti friend do? Let's find out. Hey everyone, what's happening? Lex back today for another Brawl Stars video, and today we are going to be taking a look at Spike, 1v1 versus every single brawler in the game. A couple of ground rules before we get into it. This is a base interaction level test. This is not meant to simulate actual combat. There are way too many factors that can swing the battle either way map, mode, player skill, just to name a few, so this is for pure base interactions. Some of the top, in fact, the number two person on this list. Number two brawler person? It's a person. Anyway, um, is actually pretty surprising. And some of the people who didn't do well, I was shocked. And Spike's shot is interesting. He throws out a big cactus ball, and if that ball hits you at max level, it hits you for 672 damage. Now, then it explodes and shoots off needles in all directions. For every one of those needles that hit you, you take another 672 damage. Now, depending on where Spike is, where you are, where the ball hits you, you can get hit with the ball plus multiple other needles. Now, another th factor that comes into that is how big is the hitbox of the brawler that Spike is attacking. Not all brawlers have the same size hitbox. Now the big brawlers, they have a larger hitbox, which means Spike can land one more needle of damage on the bigger hitbox brawlers, bringing up the damage total to 2,688 per shot. So, the results here may not be what you're expecting. Now that you understand that, let's hop into the first few brawlers. Tick is forever at the bottom. It just, poor guy. I always feel bad for Piper too here because this is not the test for her. I mean, she's not meant to be standing close. Obviously, if she was at a range shooting Spike, he would never really hit her and she would just kill him almost instantly, especially with snappy sniping. But that's how we do these tests. Piper, your day will come when we get a long range brawler. Up next, we have two brawlers that probably won't surprise you and one that most likely will. Yeah, because of that bigger hitbox on Rosa, she gets torn apart. That extra damage allows Spike to win comfortably. That was a shocker. Of course, if Rosa had her super going, she would probably do better. But in these tests, we do not use supers. And also, if you notice, down at the bottom left, if a brawler is using a star power other than the original one, I will put the little icon of the new star power there so that you'll know that a different star power is being used. And I did use whatever star power was best for this test, whatever gave them the best chance of winning. Oh, Barley is noxious, extra noxious. His new star power actually helped him quite a bit. There was a significant difference between the two. Um, so Barley still lost, but he did move himself all the way up to number nine worst against Spike. Okay, that doesn't sound as good when you say it like that, but it, it's better than Tick, Barley. You know, you're the best of the three throwers. Now, the two cousins, Jesse and Penny, they're always really close in these tests. Uh, Mortis is always kind of interesting uh, because sometimes it's hard for brawlers to hit him because we're just auto-aiming. And yes, I am controlling both brawlers at once. And let me tell you what, you don't know the pain of having to deal with bots attacking you while you're just trying to make your way over to the other side of the map so that you can stand next to it's, it's really annoying. Really, yeah. Anyway, Mortis, uh, he, he goes down, but he did respectable. 
Mort, in, in a real life situation, Mort would probably just be lurking in the bushes with Coiled Snake, waiting for Spike to come in range, zip out of there, and just destroy Spike. So, in a real life test, or real life situation, I should say, Spike would most likely lose to Mortis unless Spike got the drop on him. My boy Crow, actually in the middle of the pack, not too bad considering he is one of the squishiest brawlers in the game, doing pretty well. And what about Poco? Poco has had like a huge resurgence. Now, it hasn't, didn't really affect in this test because Screeching Solo is really what has what made him really strong right now. But Poco, in the middle of the, he's usually way near the bottom, but he does very well. His hitbox is a normal size, so he doesn't get that extra damage. And uh, Spike's squishy, so Poco actually did pretty decent with that extra health pool. Now we're getting into the close ones, Bo, Pam, and Tara. Now Pam would normally do great on these tests, but she does, she's a thick one. Pam is thick and therefore her hitbox is larger. Spike does the extra damage and that extra damage is what seals the deal and lets him beat Pam. She goes down in a whimper, just barely losing to Spike. Tara was actually really close. The fact that Tara beat Pam I mean, come on, that's actually pretty impressive. Terra does that burst damage real quick, real fast, and has a smaller hitbox, so she did pretty well against Spike. I know you're all gonna be like, wait Lex, what if there was a wall behind Spike? I got you, and then this is what happens. So yeah, obviously Carl's going to win if there's a wall behind his opponent's back, he's standing point blank and they don't move. Of course, that's really not what's ever going to happen, but if it ever did, then you would do have, stand a much better chance of winning because it increases his DPS dramatically. However, no wall behind him. The most normal part of the situation there, Carl is going to lose. Surprising one here is Primo. Primo wins, but only by 56 hit points. 50, he's a huge tank that does like has the, one of the most high sustained DPS in the game, and he barely, barely beats Spike. And Leon winning by 448 hit points, which starts to turn the dominance factor. Oh, I know. I mentioned that in the beginning. Dominance factor. You guys are just hold on for that. We're almost there. I'm going to tell you all about that and how it's going to affect these uh, this series of videos moving forward, as well as I'm going to go back and get the other ones as well. Hold on. We're almost there. Now we're into the top five, the five best brawlers against Spike. There's going to be some familiar names, and there's going to be one in here that I was not quite expecting. Mmm. Alright, so Shelly's up in here. No big surprise. She does so much damage up close. She has a decent amount of health, um, but just that, just a massive damage that she can deal against Spike at close range. He just can't overcome it. You may be asking yourself, Lex, what about Band-Aid? Well, I didn't include it. Why? Because it's broken. That's why. But if you're really curious about what happened when Shelly's got Band-Aid against Spike, it, it's, it's, it's this. Enjoy the nubbiness of Band-Aid. Now Frank, he has a bigger hitbox, so he's taking more damage. He's got Sponge, so that he has a thousand extra health. 
He still wins by, what is it, 1,056 hit points. So without Sponge, he would have been exactly the same as Primo. However, the only reason why he won is because Spike's reloaded time is so slow. Frank got that extra shot off before Spike could. That was the only deciding factor or else Spike would have beat him pretty comfortably, actually. So that extra reload speed really helped out Frank right there. And he comes home with fourth place here in these rankings. Now, Daryl actually does the most damage of any brawler with one ammo. He actually shoots twice, like bam with the shotgun, bam with the shotgun, but it's all counted as one ammo. Um, and he does more damage in that shot than any other brawler in the game. However, it's a little bit delayed, so Spike is able to get some more shots in there. But nevertheless, Daryl still comes in third place, beating Spike by a comfortable 1,064 hit points. Now, there's only two brawlers left. You can probably guess who's going to be number one. He's pretty much always number one, except for one time when he wasn't, but there was some controversy there. Anyways, who's number two? Have you been keeping track? All the big tanks are out of the way. There's one brawler, and she came in second place. With the help of her brand new star power, that shield, if you pay attention real close, it actually shields her from two shots of Spike, which is actually really impressive because Spike she gets his shots off really quick and she takes a while to wind up. So actually her slower wind up on the first one actually helps her because it shields her from two of Spike's very damaging shots, cutting the damage down to around the 1400 range rather than 2000. So BB's shield and her new star power helps her beat Spike and catapult her up into the number Number two spot. And now for number one. It's a shocker, I know, but we've got the man himself, Bull. This is what happens when Bull comes out of the bush onto your feet, Spike. It's not a good time. Yep, 1,904 hit points that Bull wins by, which actually isn't completely crazy we've seen bull win by like 5,000 hit points so the fact that spike burned him down that much is a big testament to how much damage that spike can pump out in a very short amount of time especially against those brawlers who have the bigger hitboxes like bull but nevertheless bull comes in number one on the list now i've been telling you about this dominance factor what the heck is a dominance factor so, dominance factor. Let me see if I can explain it to you real quick in about 20 seconds because this is going to be an important ranking for these 1v1 series moving forward. Let's take a couple case studies for instance here. Let's take Tick. Tick loses by 3,360 hit points, which is the total of Spike's health. Bull wins by 1,904 hit points. So if you take the sum of those two numbers, you end up with a negative number. That means that Spike ended up dealing more damage than he took. Make sense? Now, if you add up every single brawler that Spike went against, take all those numbers and take the sum of those, you're left with a figure. And that figure is that brawler's dominance factor. It's basically a test of how much damage they dealt versus how much damage they took before somebody died, right? And Spike's dominance factor is negative 16,940. That means he dealt 16,940 more damage than he took before someone died. That is a very good number. Now, I'm going to go back to my other videos that I've done on the other brawlers, and I will figure out their dominance factor as well. Really wish I would have kept those spreadsheets. And then I will rank them, and I will reveal those rankings in the next 1v1 brawler that I do which I'm going to be trying to do one every, once every two weeks or so. So good reason to subscribe so you can tell how dominant all these brawlers are against each other. Dominance Factor coming in next video on the 1v1 series. But for now, Spike is number one in Dominance Factor. He's also the only one that's been ranked. Nevertheless, he is number one. So that's it. Spike, 1v1 versus every single brawler in the game. He did very, very well. Considering he only has 3,360 hit points, Spike, good job, dude. Props to you. That's going to wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, until next time, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out.
Ah, you've made it to the end. Well, since you're so awesome, a little sneak peek for you. Brawl Justice is coming back. There's a new case that needs to be solved, and it's going to be good. But until then, you can go watch some videos. They're right over there, or subscribe. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.